Welcome to a surprise bonus episode of There It Is, a comedy podcast to help you find your inspiration. I'm your host, Jason Farr. In this episode, I talked to previous guest Amber Nash of the series Archer and Improviser at Dad's Garage in Atlanta. If you heard this week's episode with Hannah Ray as Leeson, you heard me mention that Amber and her husband have a film project they're developing and have a Kickstarter for it. I thought I'd chat with her about the project so you could hear some more details about it. Check out their Kickstarter. Go to howtoruintheholidaysmovie.com. Also, real quick, my buddy Andrew Van, an old friend from Alchemy Comedy in South Carolina, has a podcast called False Start, Fake Sports, Real Shots. And I was on it to talk about Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We really enjoyed that series, so we wanted to talk about that, but we also talked about the... Issues Involving Race That the Show Made Us Think Of. So go give that a listen. It's out now on Apple Podcasts and a bunch of other places where you get podcasts. That, again, is False Start with Andrew Van. Now, let's hear more about this film project. Here's my chat with Amber Nash. It's so great to see you. The last time we got to see each other was in Cincinnati at If Cincy. Yes, gosh. When was, what year was that? Had to have been 2019. Yeah, okay, so that was probably the last one that happened, I'm guessing. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I, um, it just, it doesn't feel like that long ago, but then it also feels like ages ago because this last year has been nuts. Yeah. But, um, uh, putting a halt on everything just made it, the time go by in such a weird and strange way. Yeah, and but I yeah. still think it's 2020, and like I keep writing that down, and it's like, no, that year's over, it's, it's gone. way over, we're at the end of <laughs> April, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's weird. But it was really great seeing you there, so you have still been traveling around, performing at different places. Yeah, I one of my favorite things to do, I mean, when I first started improvising, I was like, the coolest thing in my mind was getting somebody to ask me to go to another town to perform there. I was like, that is the ultimate. (laughs) And so the first place I think I went was Edmonton, which is where Kevin is from Mm -hmm. um, and got to perform there because, you know, it really like, you can't rely on your regular old jokes. Like if I say Kroger in Edmonton, they don't know what I'm talking about. So you can't make like super uh, local references because people won't understand. So there's all different kinds of things that are different. Like audiences are different. And so, yeah, I love still going to festivals and meeting other improvisers and getting to know people that are doing the same thing you are or young people that are just getting started that like want to know like what it's like to be a grizzled old improviser. (laughs) So yeah, I love doing stuff like that. And I've been to Cincinnati's festival I think when I went last time in 2019, that must have been like my fourth year in a row. So those guys bring me back every year and I love it. It was my first time and I loved it. It was a really great time. And Mm -hmm. I had never been to Ohio before. So that was an additional. And Cincinnati's a pretty cool town. Did you get to go to the the arcade bar while you were there? Not while I was there, but I've. I've been to the ones here in New York, and I've, yeah. there's one in Chapel Hill I'd been to. So uh, I know about that fun, but I, I didn't get to do it when I was up there. We went to a bunch of other places and had a blast. That was That's a really great, great time. It was re- And it was really nice seeing it. It was such a surprise that when I first saw you, I was like, That's her, but it's not, right? That can't. Why, I, don't know who is anyone anymore. That's me. <laughs> I think you actually may have like said something and that's what made me go like, okay, no, that is her. Yes. <laughs> it sounds like a really great project. This film about going home for the holidays. It was your husband who wrote the movie. Yeah. Kevin wrote the movie and he's um, the producer on it. So it's definitely a family affair. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And it's about his, and people can see this on the Kickstarter page, how to ruin the holidays movie.com. But he explains in that, that it's written based on his own experience, uh, having a brother of special needs and not really liking the way a lot of movies depict people with special needs, especially adults, just treating them like they're kids, even though they're full on adults. Um, and, uh, you are the star of this film. Yeah, luckily. I hope he hasn't, um, regretted that already. (laughs) 
I'm sure he hasn't. He knows that you're talented, as we all do. When did he first start talking about this project with you? Well, so about, I think this was uh, maybe three years ago now, um, at Dad's Garage. He was the artistic director of Dad's Garage at the time. Mm. Um, We were contacted by a group um, of actors with special needs that worked out of the JCC in Atlanta and they wanted to do something with dads. And they were like, maybe we do like a, a workshop or a show or something like that. And Kevin was like, wait a minute, maybe this is my chance to actually do something with a special needs community. Because as you said, he's got a brother with special needs. And so it's a community that's really close to his heart. So he was like, let me noodle on this for a minute. So he came up with the idea to make a short film because this group of actors had been working together for a while doing theatrical productions. And he was like, why don't we try to do something different to stretch us to do something that's, that is you know, on film and same with them. So he wrote a script um, for a short film about a group um, of athletes, a floor hockey team that is just really struggling. They've got a new coach. Where's our old coach? Why are you here? He got busted for drugs and it looks good on a resume. They're kind of dealing with a group of bullies at this like community center. Do you mind? Sorry. (laughs) It's not enough. You got to go over your time every week. Now you got to step out onto the court during our practice so you can have your weird relationship arguments. Come on. Um, and it's so funny and it, it, exactly what you said before, like it, so oftentimes adults with special needs are portrayed in like a childish way. And this movie, the short film was like, you know what? We can make mistakes. We like to drink beer. We curse like all these things, like all the full expression of what it's like to be an adult. Right. Um, and it doesn't, it doesn't always end happy either. And so we made that film. Um, it was called, it's called, that was awesome. And you can see it on YouTube. You just, Uh, look up that was awesome and so when we made that film we were like these guys are awesome and one of the actors in particular luke davis everyone's just looking out for us when they tell us what to do but don't we deserve to make mistakes like everyone else he's the lead in our short film and we were like we've got to find a way to work with him again because he's so talented and so then when kevin decided to write this feature he wrote it with luke in mind and so uh, and also colin mockery we had gotten to work with him at dad's garage a bunch too i'm colin mockery improv icon and i am fully behind bringing ludicrous to atlanta to dad's garage to do short form improv rappers short form improv a marriage made in heaven. And because Kevin and Colin are both Canadian, they like have to be friends. <laughs> and so Colin really loved working with us. And so Kevin wrote with Colin in mind too. So all the kind of pieces came together. And then he was like, let's just do it. And Kevin was born on Christmas Eve. So he's kind of always loved Christmas. So it <laughs> kind of made sense to make it a holiday movie. <laughs> okay. So he's not the type of person who hates Christmas if their birthday is close to it. No, he actually <laughs> likes it. I know, it's crazy. <laughs> Some people will say, like, oh, I only get one gift. But, I mean, hey, you get to celebrate big time. Yeah, and you're with your family. That's his thing, because he lives in Georgia now. And he's like, but every now when I'm home, I get to see my family on my birthday. So that's oh, great. Oh, yeah. I mean, I stayed, I, I when I went down to South Carolina for the holidays, I had an extended stay just because of COVID. And uh, it was my first time in a few years being there on my birthday. So that was... Nice. That's cool. Yeah. Because it's, uh, it's like 15 days after Christmas. 15, 16 days. So... Yep. Uh, I, I feel him. I feel him on that. That's he's He is right. Everyone who complains <laughs> about their birthday being near Christmas is wrong. Because he has a good point. You actually exactly. get to be with your family. What has it been like being on this side of this project? I guess you all haven't really filmed any of it yet, right? No. So we started the process of um, the Kickstarter and and raising money before the Kickstarter. So crowdfunding, but then also raising money on our own um, in 2020 because we were planning on shooting it in December of 2020. Check it out, everybody. I'm going to be in a movie. But first, we got to raise some money on Kickstarter. Movies ain't cheap, fools. And I'm going to be in the movie with you, Luke. And guess who else? I'll give you a hint. He is a comedy icon. Is it improv guy Colin Mockery? 
I don't know how I got roped into this. Folks with special needs are rarely portrayed on film. Yeah, no shit. And when they are, it's usually one-dimensional, overly sentimental, and treating adults with special needs like kids. Yeah, no shit. So we're making a movie that reverses all that. It's about a struggling comedian in L.A. That's me! Who reluctantly comes back to Atlanta for the holidays and has to deal with her dad who's kind of gone off the deep end. That's me! And ultimately she has to make a life-changing decision about her brother. That's me! But we can't make this movie without your help. So we're turning to you, the internet. On this project, we're partnering with Atlanta's favorite comedy theater, Dad's Garage, which is a non-profit. So that means all of your donations are tax deductible. And there's a lot of hot sizzle and perks to choose from. And a fantastic team that I'm so excited to work with. Except for Kevin. He's an asshole. So please, click the link below. And donate to make this thoughtful, hilarious, and unique film a reality. Um, so it's been cool because like when it when you're making a small film, it's all hands on deck. So yeah, I might be in the movie when we're making it, but right now we're all just scrambling to try to make this Kickstarter happen. Mm -hmm. So it's been cool. Like a lot of times I'll I'll get out of stuff by being like, oh, well, I'm talent. So you'll have to talk to this person or this person. But I'm learning a lot. And really it, it helps me understand and respect like the kind of work that goes like it is so crazy first what that movies are so expensive to make like it's like most people most movies cost more than people's really big houses <laughs> like mm -hmm. you yeah. know it's just like because our movie like we're making it like ultra low budget and it's still going to be $200,000, which for a film is like nothing. And for us, it's like, oh, my God, that's so much money. That's so so much, it yeah. really has made me respect kind of what goes into it and how hard it is to break in in the indie film scene. Like when you're making your own stuff, man, and people put years and years of work into it. And it's um, it's definitely not for the faint of heart. No, it's not. I've heard a lot of big name actors talk about producing something that was a labor of love and it was something they were really passionate about wanted to get out there and it could take 10 15 years sometimes yeah. because it'll just go through so many different hands i mean when you start dealing with bigger companies and bigger studios then there are certain needs they want and they want certain stars attached and people fall in and out because other opportunities come along and da 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 da, da. but in a situation like this it seems like it could get made a little faster because you don't have that hassle of dealing with the studio. It's like, no, you have to have Shia LaBeouf in it. And then you have exactly. to do all the Shia LaBeouf yeah. stuff. Yeah, like I was doing an interview with a guy um, for like a morning, like Good Morning San Diego or something like that. And he was like, well, why don't you just like, is this how people do it? Like, why don't you just sell it to a studio? And it's like, well, eventually, yeah. But if you want to make, if we want to make the movie and I get to be in the movie and Kevin gets to produce it and Arlen gets to direct it, like, we have to do it ourselves because nobody's going to give us those jobs. <laughs> you right. know, like, we don't absolutely... know you guys from anybody. <laughs> right, so that's right. the tough part. And they'll have they'll bring in some other writer to rewrite it. Yeah, and then it's not yours director. at all. Right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, then it's it's out there and you made money, but it's that's not why Kevin wants to make this. It's not exactly why you help him make this uh, just to make money. You you want to make this thing that is important to you both. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's really awesome. And uh, I applaud you. And it's it seems like this day and age, thanks to things like Kickstarter, but also just how accessible film equipment and editing equipment is and computers that can handle it all, it's, I won't say easier because you still have to do all the work, but yeah. it is something that is more possible. Totally. Uh, nowadays than, than it yeah. was 10, 15 years ago. Absolutely. Aisha Tyler, who's also on Archer, and everybody knows Aisha, but she made a film called Axis. Um, and this was maybe four or five years ago, and she shot it all on an iPhone. And it was awesome. Like, I would, uh, any general audience, other than somebody that's like, a, you know, a DP wouldn't know. Like, it's really amazing. It's like, and that's the cool thing about young kids coming up that want to be filmmakers. It's like, 
people are making films every day, like when they're making TikToks or whatever, like being able to tell stories in that way is so much different than when I was a kid. Yeah. So yeah, it is really exciting that it's so accessible, like you said. Yeah. I mean, people could get their hands on a home video camera, but to be able to film on something as good as the iPhone camera, mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, if you you really can film like that now, and it's it's pretty good stuff, you know. Totally, you you could watch a movie and not necessarily know that it was yeah. filmed on an iPhone. That's really awesome. Well, congrats to you all on what you're working on here, and. There's a fun thing going on this week for people who donate. Uh, there's it, there's an anonymous donor who's going to match the donations that were made this week. Yeah. Okay, yeah, up cool. to $10,000. Um, and somebody posted, because <laughs> we've been saying anonymous donor, but somebody posted mysterious donor. And that sounds way <laughs> more fun. Like a I, You know, I donor. wanted to say there is something sort of mysterious when it's anonymous. <laughs> yeah, so we're really excited that that happened because that's going to help us hopefully raise like $20,000 this week. Um, and we, we've we been really lucky. Like our first week was pretty phenomenal. So um, we're it's looking pretty good that we're going to be able to to hit our goal and maybe even surpass it a little bit, which would be really Mm -hmm. great so that we can kind of pay for, you know, like people don't always know that Kickstarter takes an amount because Mm -hmm. they have to pay for all their stuff that they do, you know? Right, they got people working there, yeah. Yeah, so hopefully we're going to be able to go a little bit over so that we'll actually walk away with with 100 grand to make our movie. Nice. Well, I hope all of it works out and I, I did see the number and it looks like it's, it is getting close. This is a very yep. exciting time. When do you think people might get a chance to see this? Like, is there any sort of estimate? Yeah, so we're going to shoot. We're hoping to shoot in December. Because we are low budget, we're like, well, the world will look like Christmas, hopefully. So we don't <laughs> have to spend extra money doing that kind of stuff. And it'll mm-hmm. be easier with locations and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So then after we shoot, you know, we'll do post for a while, probably take a few months. And then, then there's like the festival game, right? So you don't want to release it because you want to try to sell it. And festivals kind of um, like to uh, compete with who gets to be the person or the festival that you premiere at. And so there's all that stuff, which I don't actually know a ton about. So I'm not sure exactly how long festivals will take, but hopefully if everything goes well, we'll sell it to somebody and it'll happen and it'll be a big deal. Um, So the very earliest would probably be December, 2022. Okay. Yeah. Hey, that's, that's good. You know, I'm considering that it's, you're going to film in December for uh, people to get a chance to see it a year later. That's awesome. Not bad. Not bad at all. Well, (laughs) again, best of luck to you all, and I hope it uh, is smooth sailing from here. Thank you so much. It's been great talking to you. Really great getting the chat with her again. Let's help them get this thing fully funded. Donations made this week will be matched by a mysterious donor. So head on over to howtoruintheholidaysmovie.com. Amber will also be sharing stuff on social media, I'm sure. So follow her on Twitter and Instagram at Amber C. Nash and on Facebook at Amber Nash Fans. And we'll try to keep track of that. So follow us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at There It Is Pod. Also go to thereitispod.com to find out more about what we've got going on. Links in bio. Until next time, be good to each other. <laughs>